um, you know, first of all, I didn't even want to come because I didn't think I was going to play. You know, I, they had Gordon and JB and Isaiah Thompson smart, and, you know, I, I didn't think I was good enough to be, you know, on that team. Can you guys believe that Jason Tatum didn't want to come to the Boston Celtics all because he was scared that he wouldn't be able to crack their rotation? And now he is the youngest Celtics player in history to reach 10,000 points. At only 25 years old, Jason Tatum has turned himself into one of the best players in the NBA while also making himself a cornerstone for one of the NBA's most iconic franchises. While Jason Tatum has accomplished a ton already in his NBA career, he has yet to win a championship. But that's something that he and this Celtics team wants to change. Coming into this season, Tatum said himself that people expect us to get to the championship and win. And if we don't, we didn't necessarily meet expectations. Talk about setting the bar high. So this video, we have to talk about how good that this Boston Celtics team really is. And if this team really has what it takes to bring home that Larry O'Brien championship trophy. But first, today's content is brought to you guys by Prize Picks. For those of you who don't know what Prize Picks is, it's the super gas real life daily fantasy sports game. All you have to do is pick two to six players and then decide if they will have more or less than their Prize Picks projection. Prize Picks is super simple as it's just you against the projections and submitting an entry is effortless. You can literally submit a prize picks entry in less than 60 seconds. It really is that easy. Personally, I love prize picks because it adds a ton of excitement to my viewing experience and it puts my knowledge of the game to the test. To get in on the action, download the prize picks app today and use code COOP to get your first deposit matched for up to $100. Thank you, prize picks, for sponsoring today's content. So about a month ago, I made a video that was titled The Milwaukee Bucks Have Accidentally Created a Monster in Boston. And in making this video, I would find out exactly how many people were doubting the Boston Celtics. And let me say this, the amount of doubters that this team has is mind boggling. Guys, the comment section of this video was interesting. While there was a good amount of positive comments, there was a fair amount of them that were just like this one or even worse. Indie fans said that Boston's strength has always been its depth. Its top two players are overrated and always falter. The depth is gone now. I like the Drew move, but depending on Horford and Porzingis to stay healthy while banging against elite bigs in the league with no bench is not a winning formula. Though this comment did have some interesting points, ultimately, it's not one that I can entirely agree with as I am taking the glass half full approach. Being a huge fan of this team's vaunted duo and what this team was able to accomplish this past offseason in general. Don't get me wrong, everybody's entitled to their opinion, so I do understand if you doubt the Celtics. It's just that being completely out on them at this stage of the game for some reason feels really wrong. A lot of comments towards the Celtics on that video were much harsher than this one, which is odd because not only would these comments come after a long reign of success in Boston, but they would also come after the Celtics had, in my opinion, what was one of the best off seasons of anybody. Look, I know that the Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown era has yet to result in a championship, but they've been in the mix more often than not and that alone is impressive in itself. Since the Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown duo has been a thing, the Boston Celtics have failed to miss the playoffs and have only lost in the first round one time. That's not bad considering that Jalen Brown was drafted in 2016 and that Tatum was drafted in 2017. It honestly feels like Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and the Boston Celtics have been so good for so long that their success is now being used against them. But regardless of any narrative that has formed against them in the past, I feel like this current Celtics squad is built to reverse them. This offseason, the Celtics will make a ton of moves in an effort to reshape their roster that was around Jason Tatum and their $304 million man, Jalen Brown. Though the Celtics will lose some very solid depth this offseason, losing guys like Robert Williams, Malcolm Brogdon, Grant Williams, and Marcus Smart, what the Celtics would bring in would undoubtedly raise their ceiling. In acquiring the 7-3 sharpshooting Kristaps Porzingis and the defensive-minded Drew Holiday, the Celtics would give themselves the high-end talent that this team needed and that stars like Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum love. Despite the Celtics finishing second in the Eastern Conference standings and second in offensive rating last season, there is always room for improvement. While the numbers on offense last season were great, there would be a lot of times where the going would get tough in that read and react offense that in the words of Marcus Smart would thrive on randomness 
simply wouldn't look like the Celtics offense. We all know that Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are more than capable of cooking any defender in front of them. But what happens when the game slows down and those threes that make your offense look so good when they're falling aren't? Well, we would get a glimpse of this very situation when the Celtics would fall to the Heat in seven games in the Eastern Conference Finals after doing the unthinkable and fighting back from an 0-3 hole. Unfortunately, an injury to Tatum, wavering intensity, and the Celtics' inability to overcome Miami's deadly 2-3 zone would prove to be too much, ruining any chance that the Celtics had in Game 7. So this brings us to the question, how do you break a zone? Well, the answer is fairly simple. Having a multifaceted threat occupy the high post and simply shooting a team out of a zone are two of the easiest ways that you could break a zone. Against the Heat in Game 7, the Celtics would generate some good looks, but ultimately they would go 9-42 from the three-point line, while they looked helpless as Miami forced them into whatever they wanted to defensively. This is where Kristaps Porzingis comes in. Kristaps is 7-3 and possesses the ultra-rare ability at his size to shoot the ball from anywhere on the floor. How are you supposed to successfully run a zone when the other team's big is 7'3 and has the ability to stretch you out to the logo? Against zone defense, Kristaps Porzingis is a literal glitch. Here's a glimpse of what Kristaps was able to do against Miami's zone last season. Whenever Kristaps caught the ball in the high post and occupied that low man, it was over for Miami. Just look at the attention that Kristaps garners when he catches the ball in the high post. When he catches this ball, the defense is forced to make a decision. If they don't react fast enough or don't care, he's open for an easy free throw line jumper. And if they react appropriately, passing lanes and cutting lanes open up with the opposing team's best rim protector now being drawn out of the paint. There are a lot of wrinkles that you can install to beat a zone when you have a big that is as talented as Kristaps Porzingis. Kristaps' size, athleticism, IQ, shooting ability, massive catch radius, and the ability to shoot over a defender like they aren't there truly does make him a nightmare for any zone. Kristaps is a threat to score from anywhere on the floor and that's part of what makes him so dangerous and also a massive upgrade over Rob Williams. I'm not sure there's a reality that exists where Rob Williams averages 19.4 points, 7.2 rebounds and 1.8 blocks per game, shooting 60% from the field and 46% from the three point line in only 29.8 minutes of play. This season, Kristaps has been a problem. Did you guys know that at this moment in time that Kristaps is the most efficient post-up player in the entire NBA? And if you think that the sample size is too small, he was this good last season also. Of players that would average over three post-ups a game last season, Kristaps would finish first in points per post-up. Don't let this man's logo range fool you. He also destroys switches, which in addition to his spacing, opens up the entire offense for the Boston Celtics making the lives of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown that much easier. Now, Kristaps isn't the only new Celtic making the lives of JT and JB easier offensively. Drew Holiday has been outstanding so far. Offensively, Drew has been a steady force that has been doing everything for the Celtics team. If you need a rebound, Drew is currently averaging seven boards a game this season. If you need scoring, Drew is a season removed from averaging 19.3 points on an efficient 48% from the field. If you need playmaking, Drew will play the game like a real point guard. Drew understands his role and his ball IQ is off of the charts. In fact, right now, Drew is averaging a career low 1.6 turnovers per game. As good as Marcus Smart was for the Boston Celtics, Drew has been an all-around upgrade. If you're a Celtics fan, you have to be loving how the additions that you made this offseason are looking, as the Celtics have been rolling and looking dominant. Earlier this month, the Celtics would play the Pacers and embarrass them, scoring 155 to the Pacers 104. And what's scary for the rest of the league, is that after this game, Kristaps Porzingis said this, it might look really good already because we're beating these teams easy, but it's going to get much better. And Kristaps is right. This should only be the start for the Boston Celtics. This team has a lot of new players and new roles. And while they've been playing together well, everybody is still learning on the fly. There is still so much untapped potential for this team, which is currently sporting the league's best offensive rating while fielding a top seven defense. Which speaking of, I love the Celtics defensive potential to go along with their cruise control offense. Every guard or forward in the starting lineup for this team is a versatile lockdown defender. And Kristaps Porzingis just so happens to be one of the best rim protectors in the league. Imagine finally beating Derek White, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, or Drew Holiday off of the dribble and then being rewarded by having to try to go and score on the guy that is anchoring this Celtics defense. Inside of six feet, 
players are shooting 14.5% worse when they are met by Kristaps Porzingis. And don't get it confused, Kristaps Porzingis is not some shot blocker that can just be taken out of the game by small ball. Last season, Kristaps only allowed .74 points per isolation which is amazing. While the hype surrounding Kristaps has faded, this man is as much substance as ever. As long as this team stays healthy, they will be among the best in the entire NBA. In the comments below, let me know who you think that the biggest threat in the Eastern Conference is to this team. Now, as much as I love this Celtic squad, I can admit that they aren't perfect. One thing that does worry me about this team is their bench production. The Celtics bench is only scoring 26 points a game, a mark that is the sixth worst in the entire NBA. Peyton Pritchard wanted a bigger role and to get paid this offseason and he's got both but so far this hasn't led to any sort of consistency for him. He's somebody that I hope steps it up in a big way because the opportunity for him is there. I wouldn't be shocked to see the Celtics turn into buyers ahead of this year's trade deadline in an attempt to strengthen this weak unit. In the comments below, let let me know who you guys think that the perfect addition for this current Celtics team would be. Now as questionable as this team's bench has been, I do have to say that there is some hidden potential there. Delano Blanton is a 6'9 point guard who can end up being a game changer for them. He's one of those guys that I'm pretty irrational about and I'm sure that you guys know this already. Makai Luke and Lamar Stevens have flashed and Jordan Walsh is a two-way monster who's just waiting for his opportunity. Now, even with this in mind, I would still love for the Celtics to make a move for some additional depth. Guys, in the comments below, let me know what you think of everything. Clicking the video on the screen right now is a great way to support my channel. I'm gonna get like Coop bringing you guys the scoop until our next upload.